Hey YouTube, welcome back to Cool Dude Gaming and Tech Channel. Today we're gonna have another tech video. We're gonna talk about how to take a movie off a of Blu-ray. I'm gonna use this one as an example and we're gonna throw in some disclaimers right now. And those disclaimers are, you cannot copy a disc into a file and then resell it. This is for personal use only. That is the only way that it is legal for you to make copies of things that you own. If you did not purchase it, it is illegal. If you purchased it, make a copy, give it to somebody else or sell it to somebody else, that is illegal. It is a copy for personal use only. Please remember that. I am not going to show you something that you can do for gain. That is the disclaimer. Do not do it. Cool? Cool. Let's get into it. All right. So like I said in the introduction, we're going to do this particular Blu-ray movie, Small Soldiers. I uh, watched this as a kid on VHS for you know years and then just recently remembered that that was a good movie. And so this one came in the mail and it's one we have to use as a live tool for showing you how to do this. So let's uh, switch screens and show you the software that we use and get started with that. All right, so the program we're using is called Make MKV. It is in beta and while it's in beta, it is free to use. All you have to do is Google Make MKV and it should be one of the first links that pops up. And I've been using this for a long time. It's safe. Um, I love it. It works really good. Basically, once you put a disc in your disc reader, um, you'll click on the, the disc reader right in the middle of your screen, and it will start searching your disc for the video files. Sometimes it will pop up with multiple titles. Um, and if that happens, you typically will just look for the biggest file. Um, I've noticed a lot of Disney stuff has multiple files that are the same size. And what happens there is that it's the movie, but it's um, the subtitles, if, if there are any, are, or like... Um, signs in the movies and stuff like that are different languages um, and typically you just have to google which um, file is the correct one for English or whatever language that you would like um, and if there are multiple they will be numbered they won't just be like this one that just says titled 16 chapters 34 gigabytes or whatever so this is a different case, um, and if, like I said, if that happens, if you get multiple files and they're all the same size, and they're the biggest files on your disk, then you're more than likely just going to have to Google which one is the correct one, and so many people do this that you'll find it. So what we're going to do is um, basically look and see what audio sources we want. We want the audio DTS HD and um, English subtitles and we want those in the file that we're going to create out of this because when we use the next software um, it's going to decide how to use those subtitles so it'll decide to put them in a separate file that you can access and say yes turn these on or it'll do like a foreign language scan and burn in English subtitles where they're speaking another language. So we'll go over that more later, but basically what we'll do is we'll make sure that the checkbox is checked on the one file we want. We'll go um, into our file system. For me, I'm gonna go to the movies section and I have a uh, Blu-ray rip these um, folder that I want the files from the disk to store to so I know I need to rip those meaning I need to convert them from the MKV file that we're going to make with make MKV into 
an MP4. So that's where I store these. And all you do is hit this make MKV little symbol here, and it will start going depending on the Blu-ray reader, DVD reader that you have, that will depend on how much time this will take. And as you can see um, on mine, the output size increases as it reads the file. Um, and it says the source size here is 35, um, 1176.8 megabytes so 30 35 gigabytes basically and now that's been going for a minute we can see that the remaining time to get this off the disk onto the computer is going to be somewhere around 48 minutes and so what we'll do is we'll cut this and come back when it's done okay so now that we're done getting the file off the disk we're going to open up a program called Handbrake. Yet another one that all you have to do is Google. It's free, open source software. Um, once opened, there are a few things um, we're going to want to look at. Um, but you're going to start by grabbing whatever file that you want to convert. And so I saved mine into the Blu-ray rip these folder. And we're going to go small soldiers. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do in this video, now that we've selected the video that we want to use for our, our source, um, you're going to go over to the far right and click on this add new preset. We're going to name it something. Um, since the first thing I'm going to show you are my Blu-ray settings, maybe name it Blu-ray or something like that and then make sure it's custom. We're gonna select the audio behavior <clears throat> and we're gonna go with, we're gonna have all of these checked here on the right um, because you want Handbrake to find all of the audio files available depending on the movie that you, movie file that you're using to convert into MP4. Um, you need handbrake to be able to see every type of audio format so that you get your audio from your from your video and then you'll hit add new track um, and you know I have two two tracks in particular and these are AC3 pass through and AAC um, AV codec okay and um, go ahead and copy these settings down the bitrate 640, bitrate 160. Um, now, because my library has been around for a while and Handbrake didn't have an option higher than 5.1 channels, I continue to do all my stuff at 5.1, um, but you can choose 7.1 depending on you know what kind of stereo system you have and stuff. If you do 7.1, most receivers for stereo systems um, will be able to either um, do, even if you have it set at 7.1 and you don't have that many speakers, it'll still work and put out the sound correctly. Um, but that way, if you have up to 7.1, um, it'll work as well. I do 5.1 still, even if I had seven speakers, <clears throat> um, the point one is your sub, right? So if you did, if I had seven speakers, mine, I have a Sony receiver, it would actually, take the 5.1 audio from this um, audio uh, encoding and basically say, okay, here's the 5.1 sounds. Let's basically use our smart technology to give you 7.1, right? And I would still get 7.1. It wouldn't be exact. But then again, at the same time, if your movie you're encoding doesn't support it itself. For instance, um, when we did the Small Soldiers video, it had DTS, and DTS um, it didn't, and it specified 5.1 on there. Um, some of them say 7.1, some of them say 5.1, some say just say HD audio, and that can mean almost anything, right? So basically, for me, it's like, I'll do 5.1 because that's my entire library already. And it will do its, Sony will do its special, you know, 
um, intelligence stuff and, and make it 7.1 if I get seven speakers at one point. Um, the AAC is a lower bit rate. It's a lower, so it's, it's a lossy type of audio. Um, Dolby Pro Logic 2 kind of gives it that, also that special like, oh, Dolby Pro Logic, I can make it, manipulate this to make it sound better than it really is on like a stereo system. But the reason I use this is because the AAC encoding is a smaller source file. So if I'm on my phone outside of my house, for instance, I will use less data to get a video with audio and I don't need the lossless audio on my, my cell phone, right? Um, things like that. So I like to have both types of audio in my file. Um, so you'll put those two in there by adding new tracks and setting them up to these settings, clicking apply. Then when you select your subtitle behavior, um, basically um, I just do this foreign audio track thing here. I don't move anything over. Um, just basically make sure this check add for an audio scan is, is there and you're good to go. And then if you've named it and everything you hit add and it'll add it into your custom presets over here. Okay. So once we've done that and you have your custom preset over here, there's a bunch of tabs, summary, dimensions, filters, video, audio, subtitles, chapters. We're going to go through these one by one. And, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to update all those settings. And once they're updated, we're going to go up to presets and we're going to update selected preset. And basically what it will do is as long as like, see my new Blu-ray here is, is highlighted because that's the one I'm on. As long as the one that you've named is selected over here and you're changing stuff in these tabs while that's selected, it's changing things for that preset. So when you click up here and click update selected preset, it will update the current one that's selected and keep it that way. So the next time that you open the program, you don't have to change anything. Um, so I've made custom presets for Blu-ray, 720 and 4K. So we'll go over the Blu-rays first, then we'll go over the 720 and the 4K. Um, basically, to, to try to make this shorter, the audio and subtitles and chapters and summary are all gonna stay the same. Um, actually, I think even the dimensions are gonna stay the same. For the most of them but we'll double check that one um, we'll make sure the format is mp4 and yeah so let's get into the um, other tabs all right so your audio tab is actually going to pre-populate the ac3 and aac um, and co uh, codex because we set that up when we added the new custom preset so those will show up automatically so we don't have to change anything in here and same with the subtitles we set up that for an audio scan uh, forced only burn in um, that should automatically be there so we won't have to touch these um, any anymore just because we set that up when we set up the custom preset summary um, i leave everything the way that it is um, one thing we'll want to do is click on file um, or sorry, tools, preferences, and something you'll want to do first thing is go into, I believe it's video. Yes. Now, if you want to use a graphics card, this is where you go to choose your NVENC encoder or the AMD encoder or Intel encoder. Um, I use X264, which is just your processor's way of encoding video. So just go in here and choose that. And then we're going to go to the dimensions tab. We're going to make it custom. We're going to crop zero all the way around. Um, anamorphic is none. Check keep aspect ratio modulus two. Um, if you have all this the same, then you're going to go to filters. Um, I actually don't change anything in the filters, so we can skip that one video. Um, what we're going to want to do here is make sure we're doing a constant quality. Um, for Blu-ray, I like to have it at 21 RF. Um, then it's variable frame rate. Um, our video encoder is H.264. And frame rate is same as source. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention in the preferences. 
under general is where I believe it is. No, output files. It's got to be here. Yes, right here, MP4 file extension. I always use MP4. You can change it to M4V or, or whatever you'd like. I like it to have it on MP4 so that when I do the video codec H.264, it, it automatically goes to .mp4. Um, next thing, encoder preset. I like very slow. Um, basically what this does is makes your processor work harder for a little longer and um, because it's it takes longer it's going to give you better quality while it's encoding its video um, and encoder tune I change this from film to animation depending on if I do like an animated movie or not right so typically it's on film uh, don't have fast to decode checked Encoder level 4.0, 4.1 also is okay. Um, and encoder profile main. So um, also make sure that um, since you're doing constant quality, you're not going to have to worry about the average bit rate and two pass encoding and stuff. So that's going to just be however it is. Um, next, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you click on browse. Down at the bottom, this is where you're going to put the movie. Um, so I'm going to put it in you know, this specific folder. And for Plex, you're going to want to label this as the title. And then in parentheses afterwards, the year the movie came out. And I don't remember what year that this movie came out. So we're just going to leave it like that. I'll have to look it up later. Okay, so now that we've gone over the Blu-ray, let's look at the 720. The, uh, so let's look at the dimensions real quick. Okay, so this one is a little different. I've set the 720 to be um, automatic cropping. So this is if it's coming from like a DVD. Um, most DVDs are 480p, but I try to upscale them with this program a little bit. So I have it do automatic cropping just to try to make it be its best aspect ratio. And um, what that'll do is it will adjust the width and height on its own for you, so you don't have to touch those. Um, automatic, modulus two. And then we go into filters. I don't change any filters here. So the video codec is the, uh, or the video tab is the next thing that we need to change. Um, I scale it down to 19 instead of 21 like Blu-ray. We keep this at very slow. Um, X2, H.264. Same as source for frame rate, variable frame rate. Um, keep this at very slow. Um, like I said, with the Blu-ray, if it's animation, I'll switch this from film to animation. But as a standard, I leave it on film. And then main and 4.0. So really, the only thing we changed here was lowered this to 19 um, to try to give it a little more, to let it work a little harder to bring that quality of the image up. Because with the Blu-ray, we're just trying to keep it the same. And with 720p, we're trying to upscale a DVD from 480p to 720. And I've noticed that it looks better than a DVD for the most part on most films that, that I've done from a DVD. All right, now we're going to go to the 4K. This one is going to be different. All right, so 4K, um, when we go to the Dimensions tab, I do Custom. Keep aspect ratio, no anamorphic, and modulus 2. And for the video, on the video codec, we do H265 10-bit. Um, no encoder tuning. Main encoder profile is main 10. Encoder level is auto, um, which ends up being like 4.0. So I, I mean, I might as well just keep that at 4.0, to be honest. I'm going to update my preset because I don't know why I never changed that. Actually, I think Plex said that 4.1 is a is their new standard, so I'm going to actually set it to 4.1. Um, all right. So my 4K, the constant quality is at 18 now. All right. Um, we need this program to take longer to do 4K because the file sizes are way bigger. The information is a lot more, and we don't want it cutting any quarters when it comes to quality. Now, to speed up the process a little, 
we went from very slow to medium. Between very slow and medium, I've done a test with all of the settings from medium down to very slow, and it does not make a difference in the image quality. So you'll get the file converted a little faster. You'll get the same quality by having it at medium. So as long as you're H.265, same as source, variable frame rate, constant quality, 18, encoder is, uh, preset is at medium, encoder tune is none, encoder profile is main 10, and encoder level 4.1, you are good to go there. Audio and subtitles are all the same. So that is Blu-ray 720p 4K setting. All right, so once you have your we selected our file at the beginning, so we have a movie file. We put it in a folder where we want it to go. It's going to change to an MP4. We've got the settings we want. I'm making sure I've selected my Blu-ray preset. Um, you can either add it to the queue or just start encoding. Um, the important thing to note here is if you have um, basically, so if we say we want to open a source, right? And say we want a folder batch scan. So say you've done several movies and they're all in the same folder you can actually scan the whole folder it'll pull in every movie file right we just did a single file to kind of just get things started so um but that goes for tv shows too right so you can scan a whole bunch of them and then you can just add it to the queue and then when you pull up the queue you'll have a list of them all right here right and you can start it from within that window as well since we're just doing one file, I'm just going to say start encoding and it will start encoding the video. And once it's finished, I'll have an MP4 that is playable on all the devices I need it to. All right, there you have it. That's how you make uh, an MP4 file from a disc. couple steps, not too bad. A lot of waiting actually after you get it done. Um, but remember, this is not so that you can make copies to resell. That is illegal. I cannot say that enough. It's for personal use only. All right. Now, if you enjoyed this video and it was informative, please like, subscribe. Um, there's going to be more tech videos, not necessarily on things like this, but I got other, other things in the works. So get subscribed so you can see them. All right. Cool dude out.